car is going into the final bake in an oven that reaches 280 degrees. It looks great to us, but the paint expert always has the last word. I'm checking for the color code to make sure the color is, is proper. This, you see me, this is the line I'm tagging here. This tells you everything that goes into the car. So when you see me reading this, I'm reading the color code, what kind it is, GT, and, and making sure that the paint color is proper. Oh yes, that's going, that's ready to be sold. The cars made considerable progress from the rolls of steel you saw earlier. This is the convertible model. Those are the seat belts being attached directly to the frame. Now the sun visors. With a compressed air wrench, it's pretty easy to twist those screws in. Convertibles are put together on a special sub-assembly line. The installation of the top used to be farmed out. Now Ford does all the work. The convertible has 2,800 parts, 300 more than the coupe, and consequently a higher price. One-third of all Mustangs sold are convertibles. Now the convertibles merge back into the main assembly line where the windows are added. And here's the machine that's going to help set the glass. One thing's for certain. If it's a part that opens, closes, or moves in any way, there's a machine called a setter that makes sure it fits just right. Shooting a screw now for Just with a mirror go. Now the glass up. Tightening the screw. Everyone has a specific role on the line. Nice and tight, Jeff. Nice and tight. And the high mount. Next, the rear taillights are added. This is another sub-assembly, the steering wheel. Dual airbags are standard equipment on every Mustang. Installing the steering wheel and the airbag. This is the airbag right here. We gotta scan them off the barcode, and we gotta get the serial number off the airbag. You can be sure this steering wheel won't be hanging around here for long. Here it is, at the next station, being added to the dashboard. Uh, installing the steering column. Oh, yes. Steering column installed, yeah. As you can see, it's being installed upside down. Another precision tool that really saves time. The steering wheel and the dashboard are fully assembled outside the car, which 
should come as no surprise to anyone who's ever tried to work on a dashboard when it's in the car. Ever wonder how they attach the windshield? Can't forget the rear view mirror. They use a super powerful glue. No screws needed here. A very crucial part, the emblem for the Mustang. It conjures images of wild horses galloping freely across the painted desert, capturing the true unbridled spirit of the American West. Well, you get the idea. A very similar likeness to the Ford Mustang logo, wouldn't you say? Wild horses never needed these, the headlights and indicator signals. It makes it look so simple. This warning light signals that the Mustang is about to get a lift. It leaves the sled and will be airborne until the wheels are attached near the end of the line. As mentioned earlier, the manufacturing process is reversed from Henry Ford's day. The power and transmission are installed from below. Mustang engines arrive at the assembly plant from Ohio, Canada, and Mexico, where they're built. Mustang comes with a 3.8 liter V6 and also offers a 5 liter V8 engine for the GT model. Zero to 60 in under seven seconds. Top speed estimated at 140 miles an hour. In spite of all the new power, they look remarkably similar to the engines of Henry Ford's day. But today's engine is a lot more efficient. This is a computer simulation of how a modern engine works. Here's the transmission. This five-speed manual is being added to the GT model. Now it's time for the ultimate partnership. When the heart of the Mustang is joined with the body, one couldn't exist without the other. Up it goes. The coil spring for the front suspension. You'd notice if these weren't in the car. They just don't build cars the way they used to. Thank goodness. This is a look at the coil spring and shock assembly in action. 